This is a linear inequality. A linear inequality is solved in the same way any other normal equation would be solved, except if you have to divide or multiply by a negative at the end of the problem, you should reverse the direction of the inequality. Only if you divide by the negative do you do this. So when you're solving an equation, if you have to divide at the end, which in most problems you do have to divide, if the number happens to be a negative, then you will reverse the direction of the inequality. Let's say we have an equation, 5x is less than 25. We know that when we're about to solve this one, we would divide both sides by 5. So we would get x here and 5 here. Because we had to divide by a positive number, we do not reverse the inequality. But if we had the equation negative 5x is less than 25, and we have to divide by a negative 5, then in our final answer, we will reverse the inequality and we will end up with the answer x is greater than negative 5. But only if we have to divide or multiply by a negative. Now, let's go back to the problem that we're working on. If this had just a normal equal sign in the middle of it, we would get our variables on one side and our numbers on the other side, and we would solve it like a normal equation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get the variables on the left. I just like putting the variables on the left, and it works better for something that I'll show you a little later. So I'm going to bring the 10x over to the other side. Now remember, when you move something to the other side, it changes its sign. So that's going to make that a negative 10x on this side, and it's going to take it away on that side. So on this side, I have 13 minus 17x is greater than or equal to negative 4. With this problem now, I want to get my numbers on the other side, so I'm going to bring this 13 across the equal sign. It was a plus 13, so when I move it to the other side, it becomes a negative 13. And I end up with negative 17, my inequality symbol, and a negative 17x on the left-hand side. Now, in order to get my x by itself, I'm going to need to divide both sides by negative 17. Remember that if I have to divide by a negative, and only if I have to divide by a negative, I will reverse the inequality symbol. So in this problem, I will reverse the inequality symbol, and I will end up with an answer that is x is less than or equal to a positive 1, because a negative 17 divided by a negative 17 is positive 1. We also want to talk about putting those answers in what we call interval notation. We got this wonderful answer of x is less than or equal to 1. Remember when we did interval notation before, I said that it would be easier to put your number on a number line to get the interval notation. So we have this 1. We have a closed circle on the 1 because of the equal sign. If this equal sign hadn't been here, we would have an open circle. So I'm going to draw a closed circle because the 1 is included. And remember I said it would be better to keep your variables on your left. If you keep your variables on your left, you can use this arrow to let you know which direction you're going on your number line. My arrow points to the left, so this goes to the left. Now, if I want to talk about interval notation, I'm dropping it down directly from the number line. All the numbers on the left-hand side are all the negative numbers, so we call that negative infinity. Remember that from last week? Infinity, remember, is always enclosed by a parenthesis. And this number line is going all the way to a positive 1. Since there's a closed circle on the 1 and the 1's included in the answer, we put a bracket around it. If there had been no equal sign, there would be no bracket. There would be a parenthesis here instead of a bracket. So we're going to make sure that when we do these problems, we put our answers in what we call interval notation at the end.